Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and I actually wanted to come out with this video a little bit earlier, but due to blizzard, cold weather, and taking off last week, and Destiny 2, I've been a little bit lazy and a little bit off track with my timing on this video, but it is here. It's going to be a small one. We're going to be installing Tiny Core on our Raspberry Pi Zero Ws. So let's get started. All right, to begin with this project, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi Zero or a Raspberry Pi Zero W. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero W and basically any type of SD card. It could be as small as possible, one gig, four gig, whatever you want, class two, class four, it doesn't matter because it's going to be running off the RAM. So it'll still be fast either way. And because of that, you're not really relying on the SD card itself and you are saving the wear and tear on the SD card. So it works really well for these little tiny Raspberry Pi Zeros, especially if you've got small projects or if you want to turn it into a kiosk machine or something like that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is head over to tinycorelinux.net and then head over to downloads. Now there we just need to go to other ports and then search for Raspberry Pi stable release. Now I'm gonna download the 9.03, I already did, so I'm just gonna cancel this. And then we're gonna head right over to Etcher and load it into our SD cards. Now, I'm gonna select the image, which is 9.03. Select the drive, which is gonna be my SD card. And I'm using a class four, so it doesn't really matter. Flash, and it's gonna be done almost instantaneously because you're only copying a couple of megabytes over. Well, 90 megabytes extracted. So once you're done with that, don't take out your SD card yet because we're gonna still be loading more files into it just so we can get the Wi-Fi working for our Raspberry Pi Zero. Now the flash is complete and you see the E drive, it's gonna call Pi Core, for me it's E drive, but um, it basically looks like a standard Raspberry Pi installation type folder, the boot folder itself. And in here, we're gonna to have to remove this file called 903 version seven. We're not gonna be using this on a Raspberry Pi 3, so we could just delete this because we need the space to transfer the repository to get the Wi-Fi working. So I'm gonna delete that and hit yes. Now, if you navigate over to my website, I'm gonna have a link in the description below. It's gonna have a file that you could download for all the repositories or you can manually get them yourself if you have Bash for Windows installed, which is basically Ubuntu for Windows. And in my case, uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. And so basically we're gonna open up Bash for Windows and in here, I'm just gonna head over to my D drive, which is my quick storage drive. So I'm gonna go mount D and then make their temp. So in there, I'm gonna have this blank folder called temp. Here, I'm gonna run this command for PK, blah, blah. I'm gonna have it in my website if you wanna do this yourself in case you wanna pull it directly from Tiny Core. Now, once you run this command, it's gonna download all the files you need, like OpenSSL and the wireless module and the Raspberry Pi thing. So hit OK on that command and it basically grabs whatever you need. All right, now that it's done, I'm gonna navigate over to that temp folder and have my Pi Core side by side. Here I'm just gonna create a new folder just to store stuff and I'm gonna call it opt. I don't know, optional, I don't know. I'm gonna select all, copy, bring it over here and paste it into my SD card. As a side note, they also have a forum that does everything that you need to know about the Raspberry Pi. So if you need to get the GPIOs working or other stuff that I have not mentioned in this video, it's gonna be all in the forum and I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well. All right, now we're done with this whole process. We're gonna move right into the Raspberry Pi and do everything from there. All right, now that we stuck everything into our Raspberry Pis, power cord, SD card, and all that stuff, we're booting right into the operating system. It's, it's quick, so it goes right into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is expand our file system. So what we're gonna do is sudo fdisk dash u dev mmcbl0, hit enter. Now I'm gonna hit P to list the partitions and you're gonna see that the starting number that we're looking for is 77824. You can write it down, you can jot it down. Or if you're doing this right away, you don't need to do anything, you could just see it. So we're gonna delete that partition. So we're gonna do D, delete partition two, and then we're gonna do N to make a new partition. Primary, second one. And here, we're actually gonna type that same number back, 77 eight, two, four. And then we're gonna leave that as default, so now it's gonna use the rest of the space of the SD card. Hit okay over there, W for write, and it's gonna allocate everything, and you will need to do sudo reboot 
so we could actually resize the partition. And now it's time to resize it. So what we're gonna do is sudo resize 2fs slash dev slash mmcblk 0p2. All right, now that everything's done, I don't know if they have DU. You could actually see it should say 14 gigabytes. Well, I got a 16 gigabyte SD card. All right, now that that whole step is all set up, the next thing is to install that Wi-Fi modules that we did earlier. Now, boot directory is not mounted by default, so you're gonna have to manually mount it. So I'm gonna do mount, well, sudo, mount dev mmc blk 0p1, 0p1, to mount MMC, the, the directory is already pre-created, so I'm just gonna move it over there. Okay, now that that's mounted, I could CP mount MMC BLK P01 slash opt, remember that folder that we created? Star to mount MMC BLK, this is our person, this is our persistent storage, so anything that we load into our SD card will be saved. Everything else, like if I reboot or make created a file right here and I reboot it, it'll be gone on the reboot because everything runs off RAM, so remember that. So I'm gonna do P2 slash uh, TCE slash optional. Overwrite everything that's there because I might have downloaded a little bit of extra stuff that we it might already been in there. Now everything that's moved in there, you're all you're basically all set. You could move on to the next step to get the Wi-Fi work here. Just to make sure that everything is working, we could actually load the modules. So we're gonna TCE load dash I for internal. And it's called firmware rpi3. My three button's a little broken. Dash wireless. Everything says okay, so it loaded that module. TCE dash load Wi Fi. There we have it. Wi Fi is loaded. And if I do Wi Fi dash sudo Wi Fi dash dot sh, it should be able to start my device and detect the Wi Fi. So we're good. Now let's make this persistent so every time it boots up, it will load the modules for us. So to do that, we're gonna echo firmware dash rpi3 dash wireless dot tcz to M and mount mmc blk p2 slash tce slash on boot dot list. So now in this order, you have to do that one first. Then you would do echo wire Wi-Fi dot TCZ over to the same location. MMT, MMC, BLK, TCE slash on boot. Okay, now that that is loaded, we're gonna reboot and make sure that everything's working. So sudo reboot. All right, now that it's on a fresh reboot, if I do sudo Wi-Fi dash SH, it should be able to load my wireless. And there we have it. So I'm gonna log into my Wi-Fi network, which is that one, and type in my password. And if I do if, I'm gonna clear the screen. And if I do if config, I should have an IP address right there. Everything's working as it should be. So the next step now is actually to make this persistent so it'll automatically load into my Wi-Fi and to install the GUI. And yes, I read the comments, not GUI, GUI. Got it? Okay, so to make this persistent, what we're gonna do is echo Wi-Fi dot sh dash a to opt uh, boot local dot sh. So now it's gonna write that into, um, forgot the two, there you go. 
Now the next time when we boot, it's actually gonna automatically log into my Wi-Fi network. Now that that is over, we could test it by doing a reboot, but I already know it's gonna work. I'm just gonna move on to the next step, which is TCE load IW, which will install wirelessly or download it, TC-TCZ. That's the package to get the GUI working. All right, now that everything's installed, one of the things I did miss from before is that we actually had to save the persistent thing. I completely forgot about that. So you, uh, that echo thing that we just did with the Wi-Fi, we have to save it. So to do that, we have to use file tools, file tool dot sh slash b. So that saves it. Okay, now that we're all done with that, we can either A, reboot it and everything will work as it should, log into Wi-Fi, log into uh, the GUI, or we can just test it by pressing Start X. And there we have it, our desktop itself. And it loads really fast because everything gets loaded into memory. Now, if you're not familiar with Tiny Core, it's not anything like Debian where we have app get and then install stuff. They have their own app manager and everything is installed through there. So to get there, we're gonna go to apps, and since it's the first run, it's gonna find the fastest mirror. So I'm gonna hit yes and let it do its search. All right, it's found the fastest mirror. So here, what we could do is search for the apps. I'm gonna to go to cloud, browse, and it should search for whatever I need. So if I needed something for Raspberry Pi, like, like get the GPIOs working, I would type in wiring, and you should have something called wiring Pi. And basically this is for the GPIOs. Uh, there's also other stuff like RPi, RPi, and then you would see VC, you know, the application you would use on Raspbian to pull up the voltage and all that stuff. So they have that, they have the Python for GPIOs. Uh, this is the firmware that we just installed, so it's in there as well. So yeah, basically anything you want to install would be through here. Um, you could set up your Wi-Fi again through the Wi-Fi menu, right click on the desktop to get to your applications. Um, it's basically a small little desktop for your needs. So for me, when I was using this, I was actually using it for um, more of a thin client. So I would have our desktop or remote desktop client installed on this and it will automatically log into one of my Windows machines. It's great for that because it doesn't do the wear and tear on my SD card, runs really fast and smooth. It's, if it's something you want to look into, you could just type in our desktop you know, top and you would see the application itself. Uh, again, I'm gonna leave a link to a forum so whatever you're thinking of what you wanna to try to create, it might be in there, it would, it would be worth a look. If you wanted to create a website or something, everything is there, they have tutorials on how to do that. But yes, getting this installed with Wi-Fi working, this is basically it. Now when you're done with this, most of the time I would use this shutdown utility because you could actually back up all your options. So once you hit shutdown, you can have backup options and okay. This way it'll actually save whatever you did. Next time when you load up, it will know that you saved it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you guys did, hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, leave it in the comments below. Everything will be linked either towards my website or in the description below. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.